So now let's discuss um, a concept that you've learned in algebra that we find sometimes um, trip students up um, in, in computer science. Um, and this concept is about the assignment of values to variables. Uh, so there's a subtle difference between algebra and computer science that is worth noting. So in algebra, if I say a equals 3 and b equals 4, and then I define c to equal a plus b, then of course c has the value of 7. And that's because this is a definition here. Furthermore, if I change a to 5, then that effectively, because this definition is how C is defined uh, now, henceforth, and forevermore, um, then C now gets the value of 9. And that's in algebra. Now, in computer science, there's a bit of a difference, and this is because of the way that variables are assigned, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, but if I did A equals 3 and B equals 4, and I say C equals a plus b, um, then of course c does have the value of 7. But if I change a to 5, c still retains the value of 7 because this is not a definition here, it is an assignment. And because this is an assignment, instead of a definition, it only ex it only C only gets assigned this value at this time. Uh, it is not a definition or rule. The other way to think about it in terms of what the computer is actually doing. Uh, variables are names of memory locations. And so let's say in memory we have these locations, one for A, a memory location called A, a memory location called B, and a memory location called C. Um, so this statement here assigns the value 3 to memory location A. This statement assigns the value 4 to memory location B. And this statement takes what's in memory location A, which is 3, and takes the value in memory location B, which is 4, adds them together, performs this math operation addition, adds them together, and then puts the result into the memory location C. And so that case, in this case, um, the value 7 goes into memory location C, uh, which we get here. Um, now, if I change the value that's in memory location A from 3 to 5, that has no effect on memory location C because nothing more has been assigned to memory location C. So this is by assignment. In fact, the better way to read this instead of A equals 3 is that memory location A gets 3, memory location B gets 4, memory location C gets A plus B. And then here, which means C equals 7. And then if I say A gets 5, that still, since I have not made another assignment to C, then C remains 7, which is what it was assigned here. So the purpose of this video is to illustrate uh, the algebra, the principle I talked about when I talked about algebra versus CS on the board. And so what I'm going to do is run a script here. But before I run that script up here, um, I want to clear out all this information down here, all the information over here, and all the information over here. So we'll start with a clean slate. So to clear just this window, the command window, I type in CLC and that clears the command window. Um, if I want to clear the workspace over here, because I have some variables um, assigned over there, I type in clear ALL all. And when I hit enter, you notice that goes away. And if I want to clear out my command history, I put my cursor over here, right click, and then hit clear command history, and it goes to verification, I hit yes. So now I have sort of a clean slate here. And if I wanted to go all the way and get rid of clear all again, if I do CLC, then that will go as well. So, um, so there we go. So now I'm going to write the same 
script that I wrote aboard, A equals 3, B equals 4, C equals A plus B. And I'm, I'm going to put semicolons on there. Now let's talk about the semicolons. What semicolons do is keep MATLAB from printing stuff that happens up here down in the command window. So by putting those semicolons there, they actually suppress that output and they, those values won't show up down here. Um, if I put a C there without any semicolons, then that value for C will print out down here in the command window. And that's what I want to do. At that point, I want to see the value of C. Um, it will also show up over here in the workspace. Um, and then what I want to do is do A equals 5, semicolon, and then C again. All right. So I'm going to um, run this. Now, I've already saved it, uh, but I'm going to run it. Um, and when I run it, a couple of things happen. Um, if you look over here to the right, it shows, in the workspace, it shows the values of A, B, and C here. Um, and if you look down here in the command window, it shows the two values where I don't have semicolons after the C. And so it shows the value of C equals 7 and C equals 7 there. Which implies that the value of C didn't change, even though I did change the value of A on line 5. Now, I want to focus my attention over here on the workspace. Um, if you notice, this is showing me the values of the variables after they've run. But what if I want to see the values of the variables while the program is running? Well, there's a way to do that. And there are actually several ways. The basic way is what I'll do is come over here. And if you notice in the editor, um, there is the line number. So these are the line numbers. So it's easy to refer to line numbers in your program. And then between the line numbers, and um, the actual window where you type text, there are these little bars, these little lines, they're like hyphens. If I come there and I click on that, they actually put a red dot there. And what that red dot means is that means that's what's called a breakpoint. And what a breakpoint does is that while the program is executing, um, the, break, the program will actually stop at a breakpoint. And you can then see uh, what the values of variables are while you're going through the program. Okay, so what I'm going to do is set those, and then I'm going to come back here and clear uh, clear everything again. So we start with a pretty slate. Oops, that's wrong. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to oops, clear all my breakpoints. Let me go back and set them again. Okay, so now I have my breakpoints set. Now when I do run, if you notice what's happened is now I have a little green arrow here. And it says, okay. It's getting ready to execute that line. And so to make it go forward, um, there's a button here that allows you to step through uh, the function. So, or I can hit F10 or step through this script in this case. So when I click that button, if you notice, that line just executed. Um, and if you notice over here, A just got assigned the value of 3. If I click this again, now line 2 got executed and B just got the value of 4. If I click it again and step again, line 3 just got executed, so C now gets A plus B, which is 7. And then I click again, line 4 gets executed, and you see down here in the command window, uh, C actually gets printed out to the command window, its value, which is 7. And then here um, in line 5, I click step again, and now if you noticed A, is now assigned the value 5. But you see the value of C has remained unchanged uh, because it wasn't assigned anything. Remember, it's an assignment, not a definition. Uh, if I step again, it executes line 6. And what happens in line 6 is C gets printed out to the screen down here because it's unsuppressed. And then if I hit it again, my function is now over. So illustrating a couple of things here, not just the principle that um, variable assignments are different than function definitions um, in algebra. Variable assignments are different uh, in computer science. Uh, also, on looking at how you use the workspace, how you use uh, the breakpoints and step through a script or a function, and also uh, finally letting you know what happens or what the semicolon is, is doing. It is suppressing um, the uh, 
function or the script from putting output down here in the command window.